Hey everyone, Joe Workman here, and I just want to apologize. You'll notice that this episode, we talk about holidays and eggnog, and it's March right now. Well, we recorded this episode back in December, and I unfortunately, over the holidays, had a hard drive crash, and um, we thought we lost these episodes forever, uh, but luckily, I was able to finally dig up a copy in some um old time machine archives. And, uh, I'm glad that I was able to find them because they're really valuable and uh, I hope you enjoy them. So, uh, without further ado, let's jump on in. Boom. Hey Greg, how you doing today, bud? I'm hanging in there. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Getting ready for the holiday seasons. Are you all ready? I'm already exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You haven't had any parties yet? Uh, every weekend for the last couple of weeks. Really? So it's, Man, I need to hang out with you more. Yeah, it's been, it's been very tiring. I think next week, next weekend might be my first weekend off. And then it's family parties for three, four days. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Very cool. What's your favorite holiday drink, Greg? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Favorite alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Both. Non-alcoholic. I think I like a good eggnog. Yes. Yes. That's a, that's the classic. You only can get it one time, you know, this time of the year. So I like to indulge a little bit for that. And then why? do you know why? Okay. I have to, uh, why is eggnog only in the holiday season? Why? I mean, it's a delicious drink. Why don't they have it year round? Probably, you know? probably because it would kill you if you drank it year round. <laughs> <laughs> it's for your own good. It's a built in for safety. my own good, huh? Okay, it's a built built in safety mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's your favorite alcoholic drink? Oh, that's tough. Um, I like a good IPA, double IPA, good whiskey, and how about some brandy in your eggnog? Do you do that? You know, no, I don't, I don't do, I don't, my, my eggnogs are purely, purely just eggnog. Okay. Okay. We have a, we have a farm that delivers us milk and we order eggnog from them. So it's like farm fresh eggnog. Oh, wow. Look at you. Yeah, Check you out, don't need, man. You got like yeah, well, raw I mean, milk or is it still homogenized or pasteurized? Oh, it's still pasteurized. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. But yeah, farm fresh eggnog. Gotta, gotta, can't, can't try to spoil that with any, any kind of spirits, you know, just cool. Very cool. But probably, probably my favorite, one of my favorite drinks is probably the Bloody Mary, a nice spicy Bloody Mary. Oh yeah. Bloody Mary is always good. Yeah. For me yeah. during the holidays, like it is eggnog across the board. Like I love eggnog. So I try whenever I go to the store and if I see a brand I haven't tried yet, I got to try it. So, um, this year there's been all kinds of new, new eggnogs out there in the markets and uh yeah i've been trying all of them i do have to say so i love almond milk you know throughout the year and i love eggnog and i found almond milk nog right and i'm like oh i gotta try this nah sorry that does does not (laughs) go no sorry almond milk eggnog that that doesn't work you know um it wasn't horrible but no sorry ain't happening for me so yeah, the almond milk nog is thumbs down if you ever see it uh, in my personal book. And I love almond milk and eggnog. So um, yeah, wasn't my thing. Um, but for alcoholic, like, I love a good brandy in my eggnog. I do. I think it's yummy. Um, and obviously, like some people hate this, but like I make my, I have an espresso machine. I make eggnog lattes every day now, like during the holidays, man. In the morning, some eggnog two shots of espresso, man, I am a happy guy. Like love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep up with you, Joe. I might, I'd probably be 15 pounds heavier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and another great holiday alcoholic drink is, um, a, a, a nice hot chocolate with some peppermint schnapps in it. Like that, that is some yummy stuff right there. That is holiday in a cup. Yes. If you want to go all out, you do chocolate eggnog warmed up with some peppermint schnapps. That is, I, you know, I, I have to say, I like chocolate in eggnog. That's really good. I haven't tried it with peppermint schnapps. So if that sucks, I haven't tested that at all. Maybe with some brandy, though. That could be yummy. I might have to give that a shot. 
<laughs> Joe, you're just you're just mixing everything together. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think you've gone off the rails. Are you drinking one of these now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> To not come prepared. Uh, so what are we talking about today? So, you know, what, Greg, I thought we'd do something interesting today, you know, and um, so you know, users all over the place always talk on the forums every couple months. It's I ran my page through my website through Google page speed and I have all of these errors. What do I need to do? And, you know, um, I've responded to countless number of those over the years with all my answers to all the various things. And um, my initial disclaimer of guys, these websites, while the information can be useful, um, please don't take it as gospel. Right. Um, Cause I mean, even if you run like google.com through these things, right. I mean, even Google themselves ranks bad in a lot of stuff. Right. So, um, you know, you, just please don't take these as some people take these numbers so seriously that they're, they get extremely angry um, in their posts and don't, I mean, take these as um, you know, definitely a guidelines of things you could potentially look at, you know, look at fixing uh, to make your site better. Okay. But um, so what I thought was cool uh, today was uh, both Greg and I have put our URLs into Google's page speed insights and we're going to talk about the results. So I put in uh, the Weaver Space website and Greg, uh, we put in chilydogsoftware.com for your site. And we're just kind of go through the errors and talk about whether or not, hey, you know, you can ignore this um, and how can you fix some of these errors? And, um, you know, maybe we're not going to hit every error that you that you might see, um, but hopefully we'll we'll hit a number of them. Right. So, I, um, yeah, I did want to add one thing, Joe. Probably the most important part of this exercise and these results, and the thing that you can absolutely control is your SEO. You know, write content, write good content, write meaningful content, write unique content. That's the most important stuff. Yes. Yep. Valid point. Very valid point. What What are your thoughts, just in general, about these page speed tools? And there's more than just Google page. But there, there's tons of different, uh, you know, page an analysis, uh, you know, ones. There's also ones that like analyze your, your syntax. I hate those even more. Like I, I really hate those ones, but um, yeah. What, what's, what's your general thought, you know, about the page speed analysis uh, tools? I think they're interesting. They're, you know, they give you some insight into your into your site and like how how you're doing and stuff like that. I think they're a lot more progressive than they need to be. They're pushing the envelope almost too aggressively. And you know, if you look at some of the results from Google, you, you, I get a sense of maybe a little bit of bias based on technologies that Google is pushing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like all oh, these formats have have background history with Google itself, you know, it's kind of like, hmm, you know, it just takes me back to the whole AUG, AUG format fight, you know, from, from yesterday, rest of year. Yep. So it's kind of like, uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. You don't need to jump on this. You're going to, you, otherwise you're going to constantly be updating your site with trying to tweak this, publish this, update this, you know, yep. slow down. 100% work on what's important and if you're building a site for people you know give 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 them the, give them a good baseline i think they'll be more than happy um again work on the seo write content up you know work on the user experience work on conversions you know those kind of things so don't spend all your time optimizing first machines because the machines aren't necessarily paying paying all the bills <laughs> <laughs> amen amen <laughs> yeah so cool. So, uh, Greg, what, how, you want to, um, uh, tackle some of the things, uh, let's look at chili dog software. Why don't, why don't you go through the, the first error that's on, that's on your site. I, first of all, before we start, actually, I do want to say beforehand, before we started guys, me and Greg ran our, our pages, uh, through Google insights. And, um, we were getting wildly different numbers based on just rerunning the test. Um, <laughs> in terms of the score, the errors were pretty consistent. But the the score that we got was was wildly different. Like I went from scoring twenty six on mobile uh, for Weaver Space all the way up to ninety seven 
and all I did is rerun the test. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, it, uh, guys, again, take the errors, um, you know, or the warnings as, as good advice, uh, for things you might want to look into, but don't take that score, um, to as religion. So, uh, Greg, why don't you go first? So we're looking at opportunities. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just kind of go down the list of various, uh, you know, the, the things that you're seeing or warnings or something like that. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Sure. I'm, I'm looking at the opportunities. The biggest opportunity for me is serving images, images in next gen, next gen formats. Oh yes. Um, yeah, I could do a JPEG, but you know, the nice slider that I have on my chili dog software homepage has transparencies in it and it's going to be a bunch of work for me to try to those transparencies in a, in a JPEG with, I, I looked it up. It was, it was messy. You had to do CSS, had a bitmap and do all this stuff. So JPEGs are nice and easy. I get the nice transparency. I get a nice drop shadow and everything like that. So I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't never heard anybody complain about the speed of my site. So, and I like the effect on the homepage. Yeah. So yeah, see that I think that I, I agree with you hundred percent. Like Google doesn't realize that you're using PNGs because you wanted transparency, right? They don't, they, I mean, yeah. they don't know that right in these tests. So, um, you know, suggesting that you use, you know, JPEG 2000 or web P is a, a little far fetched because, um, you know, especially web P because a, I think only Chrome supports it right now anyway, right? So that means you'd have to have um, some, you know, advanced image stuff where, you know, only that, uh, you know, WebP's image is served to Chrome and then some other image is served to all the other browsers. To me, I mean, that seems like for the small savings you're going to get there, 0.2 seconds they're recommending on your site. Like, A, I don't think it's going to be 0.2 seconds, but um, even that, like, the the loopholes you have to jump through to to accomplish that i don't i think far outweigh uh you know so this is interesting for me it says 2.4 seconds but you know yes and it's not easy to generate images in a web p or other format right now the tools aren't there mm -hmm. and this goes back to you know that being a technology push you know web p being a technology push by google like and who, who know, knows if p is even gonna survive yeah. in two years you know right Right. So it's easier for me to generate a PNG using, you know, this tools that already exist on the Mac. Yep. And it works as a standard. It works great across all the browsers. You know, most of my users are Safari, you know, using Safari. So um, everything looks great. So why make more work for myself there? So, mm -hmm. yes. How about you, Joe? What's your. Let's see. Um, so I also had the. Uh, let's see. Actually, my first one is, uh, this is an interesting one because I know this one always gets people right. And this is eliminate render blocking resources. Okay. So what does that mean? Everybody, right? Essentially what that means is, um, traditionally when a, uh, browser loads a web page, um, it basically loads it sequentially, right? So it goes via the code and then it goes into the head and then it starts loading all the, the CSS files and JavaScript files that are linked. Now, for um, CSS and JavaScript files, those are called render blocking resources, okay? Uh, what that means is um, basically when the browser hits a, a line in the HTML that says load this CSS file, it stops, rendering the rest of the page and it only continues rendering the page once that CSS file is downloaded and loaded into the browser. Right. And then, and then it, next time, if it hits another CSS file, same thing. And then if it keeps going and it hits a JavaScript file, same thing. Right. Um, so on my site, um, it is uh, referencing, I only have one, I have one uh, render blocking resources um, for fonts um, on my Weaver space page. And um, I did that on purpose. Um, uh, so the reason I did that is I, I didn't want something called flauk, right? Which is, um, I wanted to make sure that my fonts were loaded, um, before the page, before all the content was loaded so that, um, the content wasn't loaded. And then all of a sudden the font was downloaded in the background and then it magically like everything changed, right? Um, that's something called flout flash of, un of wait, flash of unused content or wait, unstyled content. That's what it is. 
flash of unstyled content is what FLAUC stands for. Um, so um, I purposely um, did that so that uh, when we were space loads, the font will load so that everything kind of loads nicely. Um, now there are other, I only have one r- run render blocking resource on my page, but a lot of other users tend to have a lot of them, right? Because all the stacks JavaScript files and whatnot tend to be loaded in the head on your page, right? Now, if you're using um, my page speed stack, that's a part of foundation, um, that will actually take all the JavaScript from the head and throw it all the way at the bottom of the page so that um, that will help you with that. So if you're seeing eliminate render blocking resources um, and you're using at least my foundation stacks, um, check out the page speed stack that's inside SEO helper so that um, you know you can eliminate some of those things. To my knowledge, that's the only way to do to, to eliminate those. Um, if you're using another theme or uh, um, I'm, I don't have any suggestions for you. I think that um, you know, this is one of the realms of, um, you know, hits that you have to take because you're using something like rapid weaver. What are your thoughts, Greg? I agree. I agree. Uh, just, I think it's how rapid weaver has been built over the years. And unfortunately it's how the I don't know, rapid weaver and the themes API. So to maintain all that compatibility over the years, all the, with all the add-ons and all of the stacks it's kind of dragged forward um i think mm-hmm. stack developers are much better and conscious about these things now uh, and you know rapid weaver does combine all the javascript and css files together or, or i guess stacks is doing that too right so yeah. the number of files are a lot smaller yeah so things are a lot better than they used to be but as you said um the trade-off, you know, you're doing that as part of foundation, which is nice, assuming you're doing it correctly. <laughs> Only quality and, code over here, Greg. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it's going to be, you know, if you're using an, if you're using an off-the-shelf theme, it's going to be what it is. It's not going to be the end of the world. You know, SCRX does flag it too, because I try to push... I'm trying to push, be progressive, a little progressive about this because it has been a while. So yep. I kind of want people to be better about it. Sure. I agree. So, you know, when, when people complain, complain on the forums or complain to real Mac or that team developer, then enough angry people will, will uh, change things. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Cool. What's next up on your, uh, on your list? I had a good one. Um, I have a good one. Serve static assets with an, with an efficient cache policy. And that's saying that uh, Google wants my images, my CSS, my JavaScript to be cached on a local, on the user's local machine. So, you know, you can add an expiration date to these assets so that when a, when a visitor views your page the first time, they download the assets, but every subsequent time, they'll just use their local cache copy. So they're not re-requesting that information from the server again. I get that this speeds it up. Um, some of my items listed there come from actually Cartloom, which I have no control over. Uh, it would, you know, it might be nice if we can have some, have some control over that. So, if, you know, yeah, have dad's listening. Maybe, maybe we can, you know, optimize that a little bit. Most of my other images and, and resources are served with a four hour TTL. Some of them are served with a one day TTL, which is TTL is time to live, right, Joe? Time to yep. live TTL, which just says after four hours, the user will then re request that asset to see if it changed. So if they visited my site, clicked around, went back to the home page, everything seems a lot faster because they're using local cached copies and not re-requesting those assets for my server. You know, honestly, I think four, four hours is great. Even Google analytics is coming across as a two hour TTL, which is, um, you know, a lot slower than what I have set. And I set mine, um, I set mine through Cloudflare, you know, people, if you don't use Cloudflare, that's, this is the mod expires stuff. Right. So if that's what you want to look for in your HD access and mod expires, I'm sure, I'm sure hosting companies support that. 
Um, so I wouldn't really worry about that. You know, obviously Chili Dog does, and maybe I'll make a Weaver tip for this sometime. But yeah, I don't agree with their definition of long expires. <laughs> if you go to their help page, long expires is one year. <laughs> <That's just laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I, yeah, I have that same error on my site and it, I have some of these assets set to 30 days and it's still telling me it's not long enough. Seriously, 30 days. Like that's, yeah. that's a long time. Like the whole page has one year. Yeah. One year. One year. So, yeah. Wow. So if, if I, if I took an image, updated it, I'd have to change the name of it, which would then affect my SEO. It's like just to get somebody to render that. Like, that seems a little ludicrous, Google. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a little tough. Um, I mean, as you said, I, uh, Greg, I, I use I use Cloudflare as well um, to manage all my TTLs. They make it super easy. But um, if you're not using Cloudflare, you can do that in your HT access file, as Greg said. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see, next up on my list, I have um, deferred unused CSS. Um, as a thing. So what does this mean, guys? Essentially, um, so I ran this, um, my test under for mobile experience. Okay. And what Google wants us to do for mobile experience is at the top of your page, they want you just to load just the CSS for what people can see on page load. So basically they want you to, to, uh, take all the CSS for everything that's below that, right? So that, that people don't see on page load and load it later. That's what Google wants you to do. Okay. Good luck to anyone that is not freaking hand coding their websites to ever do that because that is just seems completely impractical to me. Um, I understand that the, the, the desire to have this because I mean, it makes sense, right? Only load the styles of the stuff that is visible on page load. Um, and then, you know, defer the loading to, for everything else on the page um, until after the page loaded makes sense right for for from a performance perspective but from a reality perspective man that is uh you, determining it only what's at the top of the page is very difficult like that's tough so um i'm gonna put this in in the other camp of um there's not really much you could do about that unless you want to hand code your website and even most tools that hand coders use don't even do that Right. So, um, while yes, I, I understand the premise. I think this is just an impractical warning from Google for, for 90%, 99% probably of the people out there. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, I agree. That seems like a lot of wasted time and effort. <laughs> Cause it, remember it's all for every page too, right? So every page you're going to yeah. figure out what's at the top and what is the, the bare bones minimum CSS you need to load at the top and then defer all the other CSS to the bottom of the page. That seems, man, that that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Rep Weaver and stacks aren't really geared towards that, yeah. that kind of level of optimization. So maybe and, someday and it's not even rap. I mean, like any, any web tool that you're going to use won't, yeah. won't support, won't have that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I agree. What's next I, up for you, Greg? Defer off screen images. So, yeah, this is saying any images that the user doesn't see on their page load, I should load dynamically in the background when they're, re when they're coming to view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, honestly, I don't see how much you control rapid weaver folks are going to have over this because you know we're building a collection of add-ons uh you know i know i try to consciously optimize all my code all the time yep but you know if you're not putting you should not be putting huge images on your on your page you should not be putting huge videos onto your page so if you're being conscious about that i think that's a bigger impact than trying to lazy trying to hack in lazy loading of images for all the dynamic content all the content we're building right yep. so um idealistic idealistically is great um practically um if you do what i said about the images and the videos i don't care that it's 2018 and not 1992 or 1995 an 18 megabyte video on your page not the greatest idea um you know 
10 megabyte images, not great. Two megabyte images, better. One. Better. That's still not great. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know. I, I'm being. I'm being generous. I'm being lax. I'm trying to be. You know, I'm trying to be hip and cool. Uh, give me. Uh, I like. I like under one. I like under one megabyte. You know, I like 500k. My, my goal is under 300k for most images. I try to like, you know, um, that's my goal. Uh, th- I do have some images that are slightly larger, but my, my thing is for large images, like if you have smaller images, even obviously as small as you can get, but like 300k, I think is my kind of, uh, um, oh, my good. Kind of yeah, I'm, try- I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be progressive and nice to people. Honestly, 250. <laughs> 150, 150, Greg, 150. Can I hear one? This is, this is like name, name, Name that tune. How, yeah. how, what's the lowest number of notes that we can get to still see the image and make out the image? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the images on my the images on my page: two thirty eight, one eighty seven, one fifty two. So, two thirty eight is the highest, biggest, biggest image on my page. So. Now, one thing, like you know, um, not you said this was properly sized images. What was no? This was defer image loading. Okay, got it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's one for, I have one for properly size your images. Okay. So, uh, some things that I've done is I've, um, so right now I'm not on a retina screen. Um, but a lot of times I'll use the same image across multiple pages. Um, and I know on one page I scale it down, but I know, um, I know it's most likely going to be cached uh, on the browser. So I still use it, um, so that it doesn't load another image. So there are some reasons that I, um, I scale images down um, smaller than they actually are with CSS. Um, And this is primarily the main reason because I want to make sure that um, my overall strategy, which Google doesn't know, is that I know I'm going to be using that images on on other pages that this user is most likely going to be visiting. And it's a lot faster if you use the cache version than downloading even a smaller, more optimized version for another page, right? So um, there's that. Hmm. Plus... Um, one thing you have to think of is for retina screens, um, which a lot of us have now, uh, I actually recently, you know, a year ago, just got a retina map pro. Um, I, it was my first retina desktop display and I've started noticing fuzzy images. Right. And the reason for that is, uh, the reason for that is that, uh, the it's reason nice. for that is it's not twice as big as the content area. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, man. Brain fart. I need another eggnog. <laughs> yeah. Or you've had two too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one pixel on a retina display is four is technically four pixels, right? So even though it's 600 pixels wide, um, from a, you know, technical perspective, uh, it's actually, you know, 1200 by 1200 pixels, right? So um, so yeah, so if you use a 600 pixel wide image on a retina display, it may, it might be fuzzy, right? So, um, so yeah, there, there is a case, you know, in terms of that for also using retina Im- or, you know, larger images than what the viewport has. So, um, but like Greg said, make sure your images are compact and small. And if you really don't need an image to be 2000 pixels wide, don't make it that because chances are, it's going to be really huge. So What's next up for you, Greg? I had the same thing, but I had a comment on something you said about the resizing in CSS. It'd be interesting to know because resizing in CSS is computationally intensive, mm-hmm. right? And browsers typically use the CPU, not the GPU, right? Mm-hmm. Right, unless you're using like WebGL or something like that. Yes. Um, so, you know, I'd be interested in gauging the change in your in some of the other stats if you rendered a smaller image instead of using the CPU to resize that because that's probably, that would probably fall into the critical rendering path. Interesting. Good idea. You know? I hadn't thought yeah. about that. Yeah. So, which is, I think they talk about the critical rendering path a lot in here. That's kind of what that is. It's, you know, the, what Joe was talking about er- earlier, how browsers load the page and yeah. render the content. They render it from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this particular one said I would save 0.04 seconds if I did that. <laughs> I, I think, I think your thing must be cast or something like that. <laughs> what was the name? What was that test? Uh, properly size images. 
Oh, I got 0.3 seconds. Okay, I got 0.3 seconds on that one for your homepage. Wow. Uh, interesting. But I did get an 8.7 seconds for you for the minimized main thread work, which may be related. Uh, I got 2.5 uh, seconds on that for me. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. See, just interesting. So w- me and Greg both ran our own site so we could see the results locally and our results are wildly different. <laughs> yes. They got <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. See style and layout. I got two seconds other to almost two seconds rendering almost a second. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, Greg, uh, you know, we're kind of running a little long. Why don't we do this? We're going to split this off right now, and then uh, we're going to continue um, in a part two of this episode. Dun, dun, dun. It's a cliffhanger right there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we resume this next time. Same, same bad time, same bad channel. Yep. Actually, Greg, I'll, I'll edit this part out right now, but why don't we just keep going, okay. and then I'll make two yep. episodes. Okay. Okay. Does that sound okay? All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So you want to go to like 10 or whatever that is. Yeah. Why why don't we do a quick outro really quick? Okay. So Greg, where can people find you on the interwebs? Chili dog software, chili dog hosting, and at bar shard on Twitter. Sweet. I am at Joe Workman everywhere. Um, as always, guys, if you are liking the show, give us some reviews on iTunes and please send us some feedback. If you have questions or topics you'd like for us to talk about on the show, email us at feedback at weaverradio.com, where you can also go to Weaver Radio and check out all of our past show archives. You can subscribe to us at your favorite podcast player. We're on all of them. So until next week, guys, we will see you soon. Bye. Cheers. Shh, <laughs>